Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is October 10th, 2020, and this is the Flight Sim News. So there's been an update for Star Wars Squadrons, which I've really been enjoying the hell out of. And uh, this is the update we've been looking for, because one of the big things that they do in this update is they've tweaked those dead zone settings. So now they've added options in the menu called Controller Global Dead Zone and Flight Stick Global Dead Zone, which will allow you to modify the dead zone individually for standard controllers and flight sticks. Uh, they've also adjusted the default input curves for flight sticks, which should make controls feel more responsive. So you're no longer stuck at the 10% dead zone. Um, I was playing with this a little bit last night, and it definitely seemed to make a, a monumental improvement in joystick control for me, because I was actually able to go online and actually have some fun with it with my HOTAS gear. So uh, that might be something you guys want to look into. I'll throw a link to this in the video description that covers uh, all of the fixes and improvements that are in here, but that is the big one that I noticed. Uh, they also said they adjusted some of the visual effects in VR, specifically addressing the brightness in bloom when dropping bombs from your starfighter. Um, but again, there's a variety of fixes and improvements in this, so check it out for yourself. And if you haven't, check out Star Wars Squadrons. I'm really digging this game. All right, next up is friend of the channel, Casmo TV. This time out, uh, how helicopters conduct long-range attacks. It's his DCS Helicopter Tactics series. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to talk about attack helicopter operations. But first, go ahead and go switch us hot on that like button. Then slew your sensors over and put some rounds on that subscribe button. And if you really want to keep the momentum going, slide on over to the Patreon page. It's cheaper than throwing dollars at a girl named Candy at the Starlight Room. And no, I don't use the money to buy my kids' birthday presents. Besides, everybody knows the real money's in Shetland ponies. The money you contribute goes to the community through prizes, raffles, and other support. So check it out and throw down some dollar bills, son. And now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about how helicopters go shoot stuff. I'm a big fan of putting warheads on foreheads, but the real treat is when your friends can join in too. And that's how attack helicopters like to do business. A four ship of Apaches lined up throwing hated bad guys could do a serious number on an enemy formation. But this isn't just something that happens, so let's take a look at the doctrine that enables success. First, let's talk about the types of attacks, and this essentially boils down to proximity to friendly forces. Think CAS and BAI, kind of the same thing. Instead, we have attacks against enemy forces in close friendly contact, and attacks against enemy forces out of friendly contact. Yeah, can you believe someone actually came up with those terms? I liked it when we just called it close combat attack and deep attack. Anyhow, the first operates not unlike CAS, providing frontline units rapid air support to seize, retain, and exploit the initiative. We've somewhat covered this already in my Do Helicopters Do CAS video, so let's move on to out of close contact, still occasionally referred to as a deep attack. Now this is an operation that requires detailed planning and coordination. Understanding time and space is essential to keep the attacking force safe as they transit the battle space and to ensure they're properly enabled on the objective. Much like our fixed wing brethren, we can't do all of this alone. Artillery, electronic warfare, logistic support are all assets that can be used to make a good attack group. Once again, another top-notch video from Brian over at Casmo TV. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. Alrighty, the weekly newsletter dropped yesterday and really the only thing worth mentioning um, is the damage model update that they're talking about. Our improved AI will compass variable decision-making protocols depending on the continuously calculated environment in order to enhance fight disengage run behavior. The AI will make emergency landing decisions on land or water ditch. It can also react in case of sudden attacks, even if the attacker is not visible. If there is light damage, it will attempt to evade the unseen attack and search for the attacker. When damage is more serious, it will evade and return to base where and when possible. Potentially, the damage can be too high and the only solution is bailing out. Now there's a variety of screenshots that they've put up detailing this. Uh, damage model, development Progress. Closed beta testing is now in final stages as we plan to release for public testing at the end of this month. The new damage model will also be integrated into World War II AI bombers. Each aircraft has unique hydraulics, pneumatic, and electrical systems and materials. 
As a result, the predicted damage depends on the type of munition, munition velocity dependent on distance and location of impact. The internal effects such as engine radiator damage, coolant or oil temperature variation, loss of pressure, loss of control, or other effects will generate the corresponding internal and or external visual effects. We've deployed this technology to all of our World War II fighters and we trust that the long wait will be worth it and we hope that it will be to your demanding expectations. And there's a link here that uh, basically takes you over to the page that takes you nowhere. Wah, wah, wah! Good one, guys. Well, it's a good thing that I picked up this other post that was made over on the forums, which has all of these screenshots in it, because clearly the one that they put in their newsletter doesn't work. Way to go, Eagle Dynamics. <laughs> but these images look great. Um, I'm looking forward to this because the AI and the damage model in their World War II planes have been atrocious since day one. So it looks like it's going to be fun to jump in there and check this out. And then lastly, they go on to mention the Raven 1 campaign again uh, by Baltic Dragon. So I don't know, I guess they ran out of things to put in the newsletter because this has been out for a while now. But they're just showing it some love. And, you know, Baltic Dragon is one of the best guys out there making campaigns for DCS. And uh, the collaboration with the guys at the Fighter Pilot Podcast and Kevin Miller, the Raven 1 uh, author uh, makes this a little bit better than the average campaign. But again, I think the the best takeaways from this week's newsletter is the AI, the update to the AI in general, and the damage model, which is something they've sorely lacked for the longest time. So I'm really curious to see how this ends up and uh, how it ends up playing out and what it feels like once they have it in the game because I'll definitely be in there checking that out. I, I love me some World War II stuff but because of the lack of good AI and damage modeling in DCS for the Warbirds is why I continually play IL-2. So hopefully these guys will uh, convince me to come back and you guys as well when it comes to the uh, World War II aviation side of things. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself. Alrighty, and on Wednesday there was an open beta update. Uh, really, really small this week. Uh, they're up to 55960 at this point. Uh, looks like they fixed a crash in ground units pathfinding. Uh, they updated the P-47 manual. Uh, they've done two or three tiny things to the JF-17 and the one thing to the China Asset Pack. Uh, they fixed trans translation in caucus weapon practice mission. And uh, they updated uh, the Syria air-to-ground mission and removed an empty page in the A-10C2 flight manual. Uh, that's it. That's probably one of the smallest open beta updates I've seen in a long time from these guys. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. Here's something I happened to find that I, I wasn't aware of. So, there is a new game coming out, Knights of the Great War, Tactical Warfare Simulator. Now, they claim this is a simulator, and... Uh, it looks like there's a demo that works in VR as well. And uh, I'm going to check this out. I haven't done it yet, but there's a variety of screenshots. It doesn't look terrible by any means, and it may actually be pretty cool, but I really can't say yet. But there's definitely a demo to download, and uh, it has the VR symbol here on Steam, so it looks like it works in VR. Uh, I'm really, really spoiled by Flying Circus, so my expectations for this are pretty low at this point but again if you don't have flying circus and you have that itch to scratch uh, going back to the old days of the red barons and the dawn patrols and whatnot when it came to world war one uh, simulators for the pc uh, this looks like it might be fun but for now i'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself Here's something else I happen to find. So there's a, a studio called Fly Leap Studios, and it looks like they do a variety of different little games. 
And uh, one of the ones the guy announced the other day is Project Skyscape. Now this really looks familiar. This looks like VTOL VR to me. Um, yeah, and it goes on to say, this is my VR vehicle sandbox experience. It's still very early in development, but I hope to open up early access soon. If you'd like to get involved, please follow the Steam page or Reddit. And then there's nothing on the Steam page, so I don't know. But I'll throw a link to this video in the video description, and you can check it out for yourself. Um, but yeah, it looks a lot like VTOL VR. Um, but who knows? Maybe it's something cool. Maybe it'll be something. I don't know. I'm just reporting the news. All right. I think the most exciting news of this week is uh, Heat Blur teasing us again. Uh, about the F-14A. Hi everyone, as the team continues to work hard on getting the F-14A ready for prime time, we thought we'd start off by talking a little more about one of the core upgrades we're making for this variant of the aircraft. Our RWR simulation of the F-14B is one of what we consider the crowning jewels of our F-14 product. However, we always feel like we can take a step further and develop the ALR-45 for the F-14A provides us with exactly that opportunity. As a refresher, if you haven't seen or don't quite remember one of our development snapshot updates on the ALR-67, check it out here. And um, it goes on to talk about uh, the RWR that they're going to have in the A model. And uh, there's a picture of it down below here. Um, I'm not going to try to read all the gobbledygook and techno babble that is included in there about it. Uh, that's where I get lost sometimes in these sims because when it comes to, you know, this one or that one or this one or that one and this capabilities or that ones, I just want to know what that little symbol means, you know, and, and how to read it. <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at. But um, again, it, it's pretty exciting that we're getting this close to the F-14A. And uh, I will throw a link to this in the video description, as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. And I'm really looking forward to this. We're getting close, guys, because my understanding is it's supposed to come out in October, and it's the 10th. All right, lastly is Team Fusion Simulations. And these guys are having Fall Rot Part 2, which is uh, today, Saturday, October 10th at 2030 GMT. Uh, if you want to take part in this event, I'll throw a link to this in the video description and you can check it out for yourself. And uh, also they had mentioned there's a patch 009 changelog coming out soon and they've added a printable version of the DR-2 disk from March 1941 under the Extras Manuals Miscellaneous. Uh, channel map for flashcards has been updated. Uh, cylinder head temperature fix. Uh, was happening around 30C, affecting Marlets, Game Freeze, and Gladiators. Uh, Marlet fixes, fuel tank, GUI bug, fuel tank instrument in pit and ambient temp temperature gauge fixed. Italian soldiers added to Italian AT guns. Uh, they've fixed, unable to change views after taking control of a ground unit. Uh, I didn't know we can take control of ground units in this. Looks like I need to play this a little bit more. <laughs> uh, Italian planes dashboard updated for larger speeds. And then they go on to say, Wist, we are not able to give much information. We are working on a couple of what we believe will be very popular improvements. One in particular being an improved settings configuration. Currently in beta testing stage, once implemented, this easy-to-use program will make configuring joysticks and other highly used settings much simpler, reducing the setup time markedly. Regards, Team Fusion Simulations team. That sounds fantastic. Uh, that is one of the uh, bummers of using that old engine that they're using, is the uh, menu isn't very pretty. 
and uh, it, it's kind of a mess to go in there and mess with things. The simulation's fantastic and so much fun, but yeah, they just have an older interface, which makes you know getting things together a little bit overwhelming at times, especially when it comes to joystick configuration. So that's going to be a very welcome improvement, and can't wait to see what they're going to do to uh, change that. So that's it, guys, for the Flight Sim News. Uh, as always, thanks so much for watching. Uh, please take a minute and subscribe to the channel. Uh, definitely hit that like button. Uh, feel free to leave any comments or suggestions. I'm always monitoring that and, and trying to get out there and, uh, and talk with you guys about any uh, questions or improvements or any suggestions that you may have. And uh, that's about it, guys. So until next time.